it is very, very early <laughs> for me anyway. Um, you're seeing this most likely on the day that I'm filming it, which is Tuesday. Um, I wanted to come on here and tell you what's been going on with the family and the house and the channel and everything. So give me one second. I'm having a little bit of monopod walking. So first, as always, forgive the workspace. <laughs> I'm going to make a sign when I get my Cricut going that says, um, uh, what does it say? Mind the mess I craft here. Hold on, I have to do something. It's up there. Okay. Um, oh. I'm so sorry if that just made you yawn. I've got my pumpkin cup, but it isn't pumpkin spice. I got caramel macchiato creamer in regular coffee today. And maybe you can hear sirens. So first thing I want to tell you, I'm up really early because Serve Pro is coming. Now, I appreciate everybody's love and concern and support and prayers and all the things. So thank you. I know as soon as I say this, you guys are going to immediately say you're in our prayers. But we have the most unusual thing happen to our dishwasher, according to the repair person. So as you guys know, I'm super diligent about renting the dishes so that the dishwasher lasts longer. And all of the appliances were in the house when we bought the house. They came with the house. So they're all like roughly around 10 years old is when the guy remodeled so. Um, so this is just unusual as according to the repair person and he seemed quite qualified. <laughs> but our dishwasher started to leak and how we noticed the dishwasher was leaking was the floor in front of the dishwasher started to buckle. And we could feel through the floor that there might be some sort of water damage. So we immediately pulled everything off under the sink, checked for a leak. Um, then the next go-to was the dishwasher. I would have gone from the dishwasher to the refrigerator had the dishwasher not proved to be leaking. But Jimmy took off the panel. He got down. We ran a cycle and we could just see it flooding. And we didn't know, you know, we don't know how to repair dishwashers like we had to clean them and maintain them but not how to repair them so mom has a um well we have a uh is a choice warranty basically so like one of those warranty things for your house where you just pay like a little bit of a service fee and you may pay some parts and labor and stuff but it's a lot cheaper than you basically pay like an insurance warranty company to to go over if any of this any problems in the house Anyhow, um, the guy came and he said um, the heating element, which had brackets and the brackets were fine, uh, started to warp over the years and actually burnt a hole through the plastic drum in the dishwasher. Um, yeah, so that's something I didn't even know could happen. <laughs> I always had dishwashers at work. At AHRC, we, every every place had a dishwasher, but at home we didn't grow up with one. So it's not something like that we could be like, oh yeah, um, I remember in 75 when we had to replace the dishwasher because that happened or anything. My father used to say, you have a 60, you have a 60 year old dishwasher. Just feed him a lot of good food and stuff, so. Um, but anyway, um, so it's time we've been hand washing and I'm used to that because that's how I grew up. <laughs> um, so they're replacing the dishwasher. They're giving us they're giving us money to help us replace the dishwasher. It's not covering all of the dishwasher we picked out, but it will help, which is great. Um, and now the insurance company, the house insurance company, is sending Serve Pro because the floor is damaged and Serve Pro is gonna come to see if there's still water damage. So, um, at first I was like, oh, they'll come in and do the floor. Um, then mom started to be concerned that the water had maybe gone into the dining room. 
because all of this was happening under the floorboards, we have no idea how the extent of it. So, but it would have to go under the kitchen cabinets where the drawers are. Now you guys have seen house tours, so, or most of you have. So they're coming at 8.30 and it's eight o'clock now. So I'm up having my coffee, waiting for Surf Pro. I'm talking to you guys. So that's what's going on with the house. Now, the one thing that's concerned about the floor, if they have to replace the floor, um, is that the kitchen floor is the front hallway, the kitchen, the back hallway, the eating area, like the whole kitchen, which you guys know my kitchen is like kind of huge, and it extends into the living room. Um, so I don't know what's going to happen exactly. So after Sarah Pro comes, the insurance adjuster person will come out and tell us what we the next recourse is so we're waiting on that so thank you for all i know you guys are gonna tell me in the comments thank you for your love and prayers and support and all that thing i'm sure what's meant to be will be and we'll make it work so there you go um i tell jo jimmy all the time it's about balance because we've had a lot of good fortune and we've had some some downsides too and we're like well it's you know it, it, god has to keep us in balance so we have to make sure that if, if we don't ever have any bad times, how will we, we, we appreciate, I mean, we'll know that they're good times, but you know, people always say that there can't be dark without light. There can't be light without dark. There can't be good without evil, but I don't necessarily think that's true. We may not have the labels of good and evil, but you know, if we were all good, we would just know any, know no different. Um, but that being said, we wouldn't have any perspective on how good it was. Anyhow, um, so I said to him, I'm like, you know, this is to keep it in balance. We have to have all this uh, wonderful things happen and we have to have some, some things that maybe aren't so wonderful happen as well. But I am a silver lining girl and I'm like, hey, you know what? In a few years, we wanted to replace the floors anyway. They're sort of a vinyl laminate, I'm not really sure, kind of a wood look floor in oak and like a not oak and like a light pine maple I don't know they're not my cup of tea but yeah anyhow <laughs> so okay so silver lining is maybe we'll just have to do it now like that's good then right okay I digress so that's what's going on with the house um but I would like to talk to you guys about what's going on with the channel and I don't mean that anything is happening with the channel and obviously, if you're over here on the vlog channel and you're interested in our lives, um, a lot of people have been, the channel has been growing huge. I'm talking about um, the main channel, Jerry and Henson over there. Um, the main channel has really been growing. And I knew people are always like, how do you, this is a way to get more subscribers and this is a way to get more viewers. And But I always knew that I didn't want to grow that way because it wouldn't be... It wouldn't bring genuine people. And I'm not saying that people aren't genuine and you guys aren't genuine, but I'm saying when you grow fast, people are always, almost, almost, almost always looking for like a sensational thing. Um, and it just, to me, that doesn't seem genuine. I would wanted to always maintain my, my genuine appeal, my do what I want to do and then draw people of like mine interests. So, that being said, um, I've had a couple of people come out of the woodwork for one thing or another. And again, I will reiterate, like I've said before, I don't let haters get me down. <laughs> I, I don't let people with uh, not positive critique, they're not haters to me. That's Everybody's entitled to their opinion. But this is actually a video I've wanted to make for a very long time because... We have had people have their opinions and they may not be positive opinions. And, and I guess, not I guess, but that's okay. But the problem that I've been having is not with the people with their opinions. Because many times the people's opinions are, I dare say you use this word, but it's the only word I can think of. But they're ignorant to the situation. So they, they jump on, they don't watch all of my videos, so they don't know my whole life story. They just see a snippet and they judge on that. 
Um, but my biggest problem is with people who like get on their bandwagon and be like, you know, some people will stand up and defend me and my situation. And then people will get on them and say, you know, just let them talk. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. And I will agree. So I'm actually addressing those people. And I have one that's been reoccurring that no matter what person has uh, had a critique or negative comment and somebody has come to my defense, I'm guessing, then this person has constantly attacked the person who comes to my defense. So I think this is like addressing them and those types of situations. So here's what I want to say about it. Yes, it's America. And even if you're not from America, I work in America. I live in America. You're entitled to your opinion. Everybody is. But there's an old saying that said, what is it? Opinions are like rare ends. Everybody's got one and everybody else thinks everybody else stinks and theirs doesn't. But <laughs> that being said, um, that's not what I'm concerned about. Everybody's opinion. What I'm concerned about is the judgment. Okay. We are human beings. Human beings have a lot of natural instincts. They have a lot of natural behavior, uh, fight or fight or flight, uh, stress, um, uh, love. All of these are natural human behaviors. However, many, 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 many human behaviors are learned and not all are positive. And one of the things that I spent 15 years of my life was in AHRC was redirecting negative behavior. Like that's really was sort of the main job. When you're teaching somebody who doesn't know better, it's about redirecting their negative behavior. So what I've come to realize over all these years is that we shouldn't reinforce negative behavior. So if somebody's doing something that's negative for attention, you just don't give them the attention. If, uh, if somebody is, if somebody's doing something, I'm trying to think of what else I was just going to say. I'm sorry. Two sips of coffee hasn't got my brain quite clear. If somebody is say you don't want to reinforce negative behavior. Oh, and uh, because this will encourage more negative behavior. So if somebody is throwing a temper tantrum, you address it without a lot of uh, emotional response. I know that that sounds silly and almost unnatural because stress induces stress which sounds silly but um if if your child is throwing a temper tantrum on the floor you reacting abruptly and quickly and emotionally your child will find that as attention if you walk up to your child and say excuse me that's not appropriate here you'll get a better result of, of the, the, re, the behavior not repeating itself. So when someone says something on a comment and I like to address it, I like to address it to say, you know, I'll each point of the comment I will, you know, address. Um, because some people just don't know. They don't know me. Um, so recently I had a comment by a person who's a nutritionist. And what I really wanted to say, <laughs> <laughs> um, was you're not my nutritionist um, but I didn't um, there's a really great YouTuber I just found called Mama Dr. Jones and she's an OBGYN and mom of four who like does these great vlogs about gynecological issues and women's issues and being a mom really and one of the things she said was um, I can't give you personal advice in the in the comments it's actually illegal for me to practice if you're not my patient 
So I really wanted to say immediately, like, you're not my nutritionist. You may be a nutritionist, but you're not my nutritionist. So my nutritionist, <laughs> I don't see my nutritionist anymore, but I did when I first got diagnosed. But my nutritionist, so in my food journal and my numbers, and compared my numbers and my food journal, and we worked it out, and we worked together for months and months to try to figure out what my body can process. Now, granted, my body changes just like everybody else's. I've been a type 2 diabetic for almost 10 years. No, well, I've been diagnosed almost 10 years ago. <laughs> so like my body changes, my hormones are changing and things change. So I kind of try to do my numbers, eat things, do my numbers and see how I feel and take all into account. I mean, there's certain foods that I used to love that I just don't eat anymore because they don't make me feel good. Um, and then those things change often. So, you know, um, what's one thing I feel like most recently, um, maybe it's like tomato sauce. So not diabetic reasons, but like, like indigestion reasons. Tomato sauce sometimes can just really give me like an upset stomach. Not all the time. It's in combinations with things. So I've come to realize that I can drink my coffee and I can have my medicine, but I have to eat something if I'm going to drink my coffee and have my medicine. Um, I realized that if I'm going to drink coffee, I can't have a tomato product right away. Not for a couple of hours or, you know, definitely not in large portions. Um, and then don't have chocolate that day or whatever. So these, these things that you just learn by paying attention to your body and pay attention to what you're eating. Okay. So her comment was that I was eating all the wrong carbs. Now I've told you guys this before on my channel and on the vlogs and on the main channel and all the shopping halls that um I everybody's body processes carbohydrates different um my sister Alicia who is like my 50% genetic match um is was also a type 2 diabetic and she couldn't eat corn because it would shoot her blood sugar through the roof and um she could eat potatoes and it wouldn't affect her I am the 100% opposite so just the us two could show, just the example of us two can show you exactly what I'm talking about. So no, you know, I always, I always tell everybody, talk to your doctor, know your body, test your stuff out. Um, that being said, um, if you have some advice to give somebody, and I, and I appreciate the fact that some people feel like tough love is a thing that is response, you know, response. Everybody responds to tough love, I guess, is what I should be saying. That's not 100% true. Not everybody responds to tough love, especially if they have been beaten down when they were younger. Excuse me. Good morning. You're awake. That's <laughs> Okay. What'd you say? Okay, you're gonna vlog too. Okay, all right. Okay, I love you. Sorry about that interruption. Um, so some people um, don't respond well to tough love because maybe their toughness growing up. Maybe they were criticized a lot when they were growing up and they realized that Jay's just shut down and don't respond to tough love. But that being said, I mean, I don't promote a, di a healthy diabetic lifestyle. I, every time I haul a corn product, I figure I tell this message, you guys are probably tired of me saying my body can process corn products so I can have tortilla chips and cheese doodles. Um, you're probably tired of hearing that, but I do it every time because I don't want it to be misconstrued even once to know your body and to say that I'm not trying to promote a healthy diet. I'm trying to keep my, my body in balance, my life in check. And the funny thing, and I wanted to address by her comment, the last thing she said was, um, and you're never going to lose weight this way. And I was like, well, 
um, whoever said I wanted to lose weight? <laughs> Had anybody at any time ever heard me say I wanted to lose weight? Now, what I did say recently is that this was the first year that I didn't lose my winter weight or summer weight. Um, I usually lose my winter weight in the summertime just by natural. I don't diet. It's just that I move more because it's warmer. I eat different. Um, and this was like the first time since I was 19 that I didn't really lose. And I realized that that wasn't correct 100%. Well, actually it is. It's just that when I was 32, I had gained more winter weight. That's what it was. Um, but anyway, where's this conversation going? So I, I didn't, wasn't looking to lose weight. I just bought all these new clothes and I love me and I just have, I'm very comfortable in my skin. I think that I, I, well, I know that I'm beautiful and, you know, if you don't think that, that's your opinion. I mean, you're entitled. Um, I'm, you know, my appearance isn't for everybody, just like everybody else's appearance isn't for everybody. Um, but anyhow, um, look, I made a ring on my hand <laughs> from all of my coffee going. Oh. So anyway, I have no problem addressing the negative comments. I really don't. I, especially when they come from a place of ignorance. I think that part that bothers many people, and sometimes it irks me, but it doesn't really bother me. It just irks me. Like when people comment or ask questions that obviously didn't watch the video or watch all the videos kind of thing. So, um, I think that I'm trying to say like, This happens on DIYs a lot. Like I know that my DIYs are lengthy and I know that I talk a lot. But if you don't watch the whole DIY and then in the comments ask me a question that I was very clearly stated. Um, I'm not saying that there aren't questions to be asked and I'm not opposed to questions. Obviously you guys know it. I'm just the opposite because only smart people ask questions. However, when I watch DIYs, if I do fast forward through a process and then the person does something or says something that I question, I do go back and I watch it to make sure that they didn't talk about that already. Like sometimes I'll watch a video two times to be like, you know, she didn't say where she got that fabric that she's using. Like, I, you know, I have to go back and make sure. So I, I just ask the same courtesy, I guess. Um, if you have a question, yeah, just make sure. I mean, I don't have a problem answering them. But yeah, and then, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. So if you have a question and it's not answered in the video. Um, but this all was supposed to be about judgment. So here we are, 23 minutes into it. Um, and what I wanted to talk about was judgment. So... We talked about um, reinforcing negative behavior, but one of the things that I wanted to talk about was judgment. So human behavior, like people are human, they're gonna have their human things. Not all behaviors are human nature. Uh, many behaviors are learned. Judgment, pushing judgment on others is a learned behavior. Thinking that your life or your way of thinking is better than someone else's is judgment. And it's not right. I don't do it. And I'm not saying that you have to do everything I do. But if you saw me do it, then I would feel differently about being on this platform and, and talking about it. But I don't judge people. I, I sometimes have an opinion Maybe it is a judgment on their certain behaviors. Like, I think that something that they may do is not socially acceptable or appropriate or, um, you know, maybe not the right way to do something or um, if there's a controversy or if there was a... Controversy is not the right word, but 
if there was something to like a like a disagreement and I didn't like the way someone handled it I'm not passing judgment on them it's just that I don't like the way you handled it it's different um so but judgment is like you know you shouldn't be up here doing this and that and the other thing and I'm like well really <laughs> Who are you to tell me what I should and shouldn't be doing with my content? I had a very interesting email yesterday, and I'm sure if you're, you know, I'm sure she's not watching this because of the way she, the email was, but <laughs> um, she was, you know, very trying to be very, you know, not trying. She was being very nice about and complimentary. She had been only watching videos for a few months, she said. She said in the beginning, she was very impressed with all of the DIYs, but now it's become all about shopping. Well, I hate to point out to her that it has always been about shopping. <laughs> it just, um, when she came in, it wasn't. I started this channel in January and I moved all of the food hauls to this channel. Um, but I've always shared everything else on the main channel. Um, not just Dollar Tree, but Five Below, Target, Dollar Spot, any of those things. I've always shared them on my main channel. That hasn't changed. Um, it still won't. I know that we didn't see very many clothes, hole, clothes holes in the past because I couldn't afford clothes. <laughs> but anytime I bought a new shirt at Walmart, I shared it. Or a new nightgown or a new dress or something, I shared it. So, anyhow... Um, if you're on this vlog channel, like I said in the beginning, I know that you're probably more interested in my everyday, um, and just hanging out with me. And I appreciate that. And I am sorry. I've been very absent from it. There is a lot going on. There's a lot to manage and juggle with this channel, with the house, with, with my main channel. And I am really trying to be what everybody wants me to be while still maintaining my sense of me um and i you know that isn't even right because i don't really want to try to be what everybody else wants me to be i just want to be me <coughs> and i'll go back to just drawing like-minded people if that's the case um but i think that the judgment i wanted to mention was um this channel and my main channel are my platforms to do what I want. And if you want different content, you can go ahead and watch someone else's channel. You cannot watch every video on my channel if you want to. Um, I feel like I label my videos very well with what they are. Um, so if you only want DIYs, DIY videos always start with DIY. The word DIY, Dollar Tree. Every once in a while, they'll start with a number four. Like, I'll say four DIYs, whatever. But they always start with DIY in the first, second, third word. So they're very obviously there. Um, if you don't want to see the other stuff, you don't have to watch it. It's not, it's, not a, <laughs> it's not a prerequisite when you subscribe to someone's channel that you have to watch all their videos. Um, but that being said, I kind of hope that, um, you know, the like-minded people will stay. And I see that in my numbers. I see numbers of, of what everybody is, um, like how many views each MOOC channel, each video has gotten. I see, um, you know, I know that the clothing holes don't get the same views as the DIYs and I'm okay with that. I am 100% okay with that. Um, because, oh Lord, imagine what my house would look like if I did DIYs every single day and only DIYs every single day. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> now I could, <clears throat> it used to be that one DIY per video, um, <clears throat> but I started to condense to maybe two or three DIYs per video. Um, they seem to get more, be more popular. Um, they seem to be more um, desirable. Um, but, you know, if it's longer and I don't want to do it, I won't. 
But really what it comes down to is I craft and create when I can, when my creativity flows, when my body will let me, when I have the materials and the ambition and the supplies and the ideas and everything comes together and I'll DIY. I try to make sure there's at least one DIY per week. Um, think that with the exception of last Saturday, not last Saturday, but Saturday before's live stream because we had technical difficulties <laughs> and I couldn't get the DIYs up. That was the exception. But you did get DIYs that week, just not on Saturday. But I don't know. I appreciate you all. Um, I feel like if you're watching this vlog channel, then you really are like a member of my support system. I really do feel that way. Um, and I thank you. And I thank you. Jim thanks you. Mom thanks you. Um, my best friends thank you because you're like my sounding board um, when they can't be. So I want to thank everybody. Um, so that's it for this morning. I'm going to go finish my coffee. And I'm going to start to clean up this space a little bit because we have to put away all of autumn, or most of autumn, and start Halloween. Which I know a lot of people are starting Christmas. See, that's why, that's, that's a perfect example of how I won't change. <laughs> I won't change because I don't feel it in my heart to start DIYing Christmas stuff in the beginning of October. Sorry. I'm sorry. I just, yeah, you know. So as always, you guys take care. God bless. I'll see you next time.